Well, oh my, I just got done mowing my grass. And I will show you guys how much that affects the solar you can generate off of those panels. I've got two different types of solar panels that I, I, I'm going to test here. This is just your typical 72 cells in series to make a you know 48 volt or whatever panel, right? And then this one here, you can see two panels in one. So this is a 144 volt panel. I'm sorry. 144 cell panel, still the same voltage. So it's essentially two panels put together with a diode in the middle to keep them separate so they're connected in parallel. So you end up with kind of a parallel series situation. Now the idea here is that you should be able to shade the bottom half of the panel or the top half and not lose your whole panel, which would be amazing, right? So let me show you the test setup here and then we'll go through testing a couple of these panels. So what we've got here is the the PV wires coming from the panels into the solar charge controller. And then the solar charge controller is connected to the batteries. And then what we've got here is just your standard 12 volt lead acid battery tester. And it basically just puts a 100 amp load on the batteries. And I'll use that in case the batteries are starting to get topped off and it's going into float mode. Then I'll run that to get it out of float mode into bulk charge mode so we can see exactly how much wattage we're getting off of the panels. Now, if you want to see some more on this setup, there's another video I've got up on the channel under my DIY builds uh, to see what all I've got here and how it's set up. But that's what we're going to use for our test setup. We are at 13.8 volts on our battery, so we should not be in float mode. We'll just check. So we're going to run our high amp load here for a second and see. We got some clouds rolling over. I think that's what we got. So we're down at 70 watts now. All right, so we'll hang out for a minute while the clouds roll away. And once the sun comes back out, we will find out what this panel is getting and then start sh doing some shading tests on it to see what happens. Okay, so here we are again with our test setup. We've got full sun now. We're getting 195 watts at about 4 o'clock in the afternoon, 3.30 in the afternoon, which is about right. Um, so we're going to do some shading real quick and then we will come back to see how this wattage changes. So we're currently messing with the top or the, the big panel here. This is the 395 watt panel. So let's shade the top half. Let's see what wattage we get. So we're getting about 130 watts off of that. We'll do this ABA. So now let's see what we get with everything. Getting 270 watts with the whole panel. We'll go back to the shaded on half of it. Now we're back down to 120. All right, so now let's shade the bottom half. So we got 130 with the top half shaded, and then 120 the second time. We're getting about 270 with the full panel. All right, so now we just have the bottom half shaded. Let's see if we get there. Now we're at 130 watts with the bottom half shaded. So that's consistent. So now what we need to do is swap over and try the same thing on the 72 cell. Panel. Now keep in mind, the panel that we just tested was a 400 watt panel, 395 watt panel. This uh, standard 72 cell panel is 305 watts. So we're getting 205 watts off of this one with the full panel visibility. So let's throw a blanket on the bottom half and see what happens. There you have it. There's a great advantage to having this dual panel set up. We're down to three watts. That's basically nothing. Uh, just for kicks, we'll shade the top half and see what happens. And that's the same. Okay, so something else I'm curious about is one cell. If you cover one cell of the panel, is it the same as covering half the panel? Let's see. All right. So that shade is only covering the one panel, or the one cell. So let's see what that does for our wattage. All right, so that took us down to 14 watts. That's a little bit better than our three. So how about a single cell halfway shading? This should theoretically only remove, if I understand it right, half the wattage from this panel. Let's see. All right, so I think I'm right. So it's 120 watts. So let's shade the half of a second cell. That should stay about the same. It should still be about 120 watts. So 
So we're down just a little further to 110 watts. So this is why everyone says, if you've got a string of solar panels, you can't have anything shading any of it, like your chimney. Now, I'm only testing one panel. We need to go through and test, let's put two panels in series and see what that does for these same kinds of tests and these two different types of panels. Okay, so we're at 545 watts with no shading whatsoever. Let's throw the blanket on and do half panel tests real quick to see how that affects it. And I'll be more careful with my blanket and not shade the other panel this time. Earlier I didn't care because the other one wasn't hooked up. So that took us to about 260 watts, which is in fact half. So what that does is if you shade half of one of these newer style panels that are 144 cells, and I believe they've got these in the 60 cell versions where there's 30 and 30, well, 60 and 60 for 120 cells, right? Um, that means that you essentially take the solar array and you cut it in half, or that string, right? You could have multiple strings, maybe for the, the different roof uh, faces, anyway. Um, so that's what that does. So let's do some individual cells and see what that does on this panel. All right, so we're back up to 540 watts. We will block one cell. So one cell took us down to 310 from 540. So it was significant, but it wasn't as significant as blocking the whole half of the array. Um, so let's set out two of the old style 305 watt panels and see what they do with this same test when you're in a string. Because it sounds like if you block half the panel, you're gonna have absolutely no power generation with the 72 cell panel. All right, so here we are with two 305 watt panels in series. These are the se standard 72 cell versions. So right now we've got two connected, we'll get our baseline. How many watts does two in series create? All right, so we're at 370 watts. Let's cover half of our panel here. So that takes us down to 10 watts. So let's do single cell test. I believe we came down to like six or five watts when it was just a single panel that we did that to. Um, so that's interesting data. Not unexpected though. That takes us down to 20 watts. And I'm wondering if we're at 20 watts because I don't have the cells blocked close enough to the glass. Because they could still be getting some indirect sunlight. Let's see what this does. Okay, that's crazy. How in the world are we getting 270 watts now? It's like it didn't even think I was blocking it. Is this cardboard too thin? Is that a thing? Don't get me wrong, I'm happy to get 240 watts even with a cell blocked. That's just baffling me that that works. All right, cool. Well, it looks like we're getting some voltage there, some wattage. Let's try a couple cells. Maybe these have some internal diodes. Still getting 280 watts. And then now we're up at 360 with the two full panels. Let me go back to this test because that doesn't make sense to me. We block half the panel again. What happens? That definitely takes us down to 11. Let's try just one row. What does that do? We've got 64 watts. I didn't leave some of this exposed. So that seems the same. Let's try one cell but with the blanket. And now we're back up to 240. So let's try a couple, a few cells that are vertical. So how many cells does it take to knock it offline completely? So it seems like it doesn't like me blocking them horizontally, but it's okay with blocking them vertically. So you guys tell me about that. Why does it, why does it care whether I'm blocking the cells vertically or horizontally? So let's block half the cells vertically and see what does there. 
I don't know if my blanket's gonna reach that far. Of course, this ends up blocking some of them horizontally anyway. So that does take us down to 14 watts, or negligible watts. But if I'm only blocking one row, if I'm only blocking one row, I can get over 100 watts on it. Instead of the, what was I getting, about 400, 350. So that's very curious. It definitely prefers you blocking it vertically rather than horizontally. So if you know why, let me know in the comments, because I don't know why. I'm just testing. I'm sure there's a reason. That kind of concludes what shading does. Um, if there's some scenarios that I didn't test, let me know down in the comments. I'd be happy to do another one of these videos. I'm curious how shading really affects solar panels. Well, oh my, I just got done mowing my grass and my temporary solar panels here are just totally filthy. So we're still pulling in 570 watts. We lost about half of our energy with that shaded is the benefit of having split panels. 